we continue with the presentation. Our next speaker is Eugen Sumin with a talk titled How to Ace Kubernetes Data Protection with Open Source. Here you go. Hey, hi, everybody. I'm Eugen Sumin. I'm senior developer in the custom uh, by Wim. And uh, I'm excited to be here and present it, uh, this speech to you. Uh, I, today, I will be talking about uh, two open source products, uh, Canister and the Copia and they could be used together to enable backups and recovery uh, of stateful applications uh, on the Kubernetes. Uh, but before we mm, will speak about these great projects, uh, let's discuss the, generally how the data management on Kubernetes is done. As you probably know, that um, uh, the cloud native applications uh, comprise several components, including the persistent volumes, uh, databases, and uh, some other associated Kubernetes resources. And um, the simplest way how to make some backup is uh, just to use uh, storage-centric snapshots provided by uh, underlying storage provider. This, they are pretty fast. They crash consistent, uh, and uh, in most cases, it's the quickest possible solution for the backup. However, this snapshot uh, doesn't talk to the database and to the application. You cannot uh, know that the snapshot is taking at this moment. This uh, could be solved uh, if uh, we can use some APIs provided by data services, and we can freeze and unfreeze and flush some data uh, from the application. Uh, when the snapshot is taken. But uh, there is another approach, which is a uh, data uh, service-centric approach, where we can use the tools from databases like pgdump, uh, uh, mongodump, or mysql dump, and other, to create the snapshots of the database, and uh, they provide the database consistency, and uh, could be restored on any kind of the storage. Uh, but the restoring from such uh, backups could be pretty complicated sometimes. Uh, so we have the challenge. Uh, all these methods have pros, cons, and uh, if we're speaking about the speed, consistency, and cost, uh, and the optimal strategy for the different applications will be different. It depends on the needs of the application, of the capabilities of the infrastructure which is used, and um, if we are uh, talking about uh, even about the single uh, application which is uh, which can use the different databases, different storages. Uh, for the different databases, uh, you can have the different DB admins, and for different domains, you have the different groups of experts, and they all can have different requirements. And it's very difficult uh, to make the, uh, these things to like working properly. And uh, uh, some applications may require some shutdown on when we are making the snapshot, some applications doesn't. So the, the, the problem is pretty complex. And of course, sometimes we need to upload the, the backups to completely different storages. It could be the local fi file system, locally connected file storage, or network file storage. It could be object storage. So there is a bunch of uh, complex problems. So the tool which will be, which will make us, make backup of uh, stateful application, uh, should provide, uh, should, or should cover all these uh, problems. And uh, it, it, must, it must meet the, uh, all the requirements uh, and uh, it should provide the security and re reliability. Uh, of course, it should provide some authentication and authorization because when we are making the snapshots, uh, not everybody are allowed to make snapshot, not everybody allowed to recover snapshot. And of course, when we are moving the snapshot outside of the Kubernetes cluster, we need to somehow encrypt it so that we will be sure that nobody will get an access uh, to, to, to our backups. And of course, when we are uploading to some remote storages, it's very important how we are efficient in the transfer speed. And uh, also, it's, sometimes it could be uh, very important to upload as, uh, no, not as much information as we can, but uh, the, the less, because it could be pretty expensive. And of course, uh, there should be the freedom uh, of choice uh, of the target of our backups. And uh, we have this solution for, for all these problems. It's uh, the duo of two open source projects. One of them is Canister, another one is the Copia. And let's see how they can help us. 
So the canister is uh, more than like fr framework. It provides pretty rich functionality and it's purposed for the application level data protection on the Kubernetes. Uh, it's implemented as um, the Kubernetes controller using the operator pattern. We can define and execute the uh, database or application specific workflows and register uh, them as in form of uh, Kubernetes uh, CRDs, so it's pretty common way. Uh, then when we have the blueprint which uh, provides different actions which could be taken uh, for this application, we can uh, use the action set which uh, refers these actions, particular actions, and can perform them. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we have, or the, the canister provides us some a predefined set of the qualified blueprints for very uh, uh, or for frequently used databases and for popular databases. Uh, so you can you don't need to in invent the, the wheel again. <laughs> and the, the copia provides us the functionality of uh, uh, ex exporting the um, snapshots to remote storage. Uh, it, the day making the, du the duplication, uh, com compression, encryption. Uh, and management them on the remote storage. Of course, it's able to work with the different kinds of the remote and cloud storages. Let's say it supports the S3, um, Azure, uh, Google Cloud, and um, other. other. Uh, on, the, on this slide, you can see uh, how, like, let's say a regular blueprint looks like we, uh, in the blueprint, we are defining the actions which could be uh, executed against this application, and uh, for uh, uh, for for each action, you may have uh, uh, the artifacts, which uh, will be the result of this, ac this action, and uh, you can pass some parameters like the, like the secrets there. And uh, uh, in this particular task, the uh, the action consists of one phase, but uh, theoretically it can consist of several phases, and we can pass the data across the, uh, from phase to phase and uh, make much more complicated uh, scenarios. And uh, in, in this case, it's pretty simple scenario. We are executing the cube task. Cube task, it's a pretty simple function uh, which provided by the uh, canister, which executes uh, a command within the pod in, in the Kubernetes. Uh, here we have the list of qualified blueprints and uh, each uh, blueprint where you can see the copia uh, logo around uh, were uh, verified by the canister maintainers and uh, they are pretty cool. And also the canister can create the profiles uh, for S3, GSC and Azure for the backup targets and also it has uh, the um, blueprints for the operators for the Kafka, Postgres and Cassandra and actually it's just that's just a wrapper to, to these operators and it can do what these operators can do. Uh, if we will speak about the copia, what copia can do uh, and how, how it works. So copia works with the uh, thing which called the repository and uh, it stores the backups or snapshots within this repository. The mm, snapshot is um, uh, just uh, snapshot of uh, the file system. You actually can specify what exactly you would like to back up, uh, let's say some directory, and uh, this directory, all the content will be inspected. You can specify what should be excluded or included, and uh, the copia will do it for you. Uh, when the copia works with, uh, uh, with the snapshots, it uh, does, uh, it, it, can, it, it stores them as a blobs, and uh, each, uh, each blob is addressable by the hash of its content. And uh, when, when we are doing the first uh, snapshot uh, using the copia, copia will go uh, through the whole uh, structure of uh, your directory and it will in, uh, hash the files, it will prepare the blobs, and it will push these blobs to the remote storage. When you are doing the incremental backup, it will just uh, take some metadata for this um, uh, structure, it will take uh, the actual state of your file storage, it will compare and uh, will upload only the changed things. And of course, the encryption, uh, the compression, the verification, everything is done on the side of the application, so the only changed small chunks of data are uploaded to the cloud. So it's pretty efficient and pretty, f pretty fast. So if we will look uh, how the canister can work with the copia, we can uh, imagine that we have 
the canister controller. We have the blueprint registered for some database, and uh, uh, we are creating the action set. The canister controller sees the action set, and uh, it verifies uh, uh, how how it uh, corresponds to the blueprint. And if everything is okay, it starts the executing it. So it spins the pod, and uh, this pod connects to the database and makes the dump. So when the dump is ready, it uh, takes uh, asks the copia to perform uh, the backup, and the copia sends the diff uh, to the cloud. And uh, also, Kinesar controller updates the action set, and uh, it writes the action set information about the uh, snapshot which, which was done, and uh, uh, you can refer this uh, information uh, later when you will, for instance, when you will or want to make uh, the restore a procedure or when you will, would like to uh, remove some obsolete uh, backups. Uh, there should be demo, but uh, because uh, the making the re real-time demo is pretty uh, time-consuming, I prepared several screenshots which will de de describe the process of uh, uh, setting up the things. So uh, the first thing which we Pretty small. Uh, the first thing which we uh, need to do, of course, is install the canister. Uh, it could be done easily using the helm. It's uh, just uh, one command and everything works like a charm. Uh, uh, when the canister is installed, uh, we can check the, the operator status. And when the operator is running, we can actually start work or start preparing to backup. Uh, so uh, if we will check the uh, operator details, we can see that there are uh, two containers inside uh, inside of the canister, and I will uh, return to them a bit uh, later. Okay, so imagine that we have some Mongo server. I created some uh, small data set there, so it's just uh, fake data, and uh, we would like to make the backup from it, uh, the snapshot of this Mongo database. Uh, we are using the CanCTL, and we creating the profile. Uh, we can then uh, create the, the blueprint using the kubectl. Pretty regular commands. Uh, everybody uh, are familiar with the second one, and uh, the first one is also very simple. Uh, so when we have uh, because, uh, when we have the blueprint already uh, in uh, in the Kubernetes, we want to make the backup right now. So we create the action set. In the action set, we are referring uh, what uh, uh, action we would like to perform. It's the backup action. We are specifying the namespace. We are specifying which blueprint should be used, uh, which stateful set should be used, and uh, where we will uh, upload the data. We are specifying the profile S3. Uh, it's S3 here, and uh, uh, then we can check uh, the status of uh, this action set. In status, we can see that it's running because sometimes the database <laughs> have a lot of <laughs> data and uh, it requires some time. So when the data is done uh, or when the backup is done, we see that the status is complete. And uh, below, you can see in the events that we have the backup with some ID. Uh, and if we will check uh, this, uh, the artifacts, we see that there is some artifact which was uploaded to remote storage. And we can uh, check the AWS and we will see the file there. So uh, we have backup in, in the cloud. Let's simulate some disaster, just removing uh, everything from database, nothing there. We need to recover. So uh, we can use, again, the action set. Action set refers the uh, action restore. We are saying from which particular backup, uh, if you remember uh, when the action set uh, backup finished, there was the name or the ID of the backup. Now we can reuse this ID and say, hey, we would like to restore from this particular backup. And uh, here we can see uh, that uh, it was successful. Restore is finished. And we can check database. And database contains the data again. So we are saved. Hurrah. And you may say, like, where is the copy? Where is the repository? There was some just uh, archive in the cloud. Yes. Uh, this was the simple possible uh, scenario when we just taking uh, the snapshot of database and uploading to the cloud. That's all. We are not solving anything. It's, it's not good. It's not solving a bunch of the problems. So 
We have the another part which uh, works tightly with uh, the canister is the copy repository server. And the server allows us to uh, keep connection with the repository, with the remote repository, and communicate with it, upload some data or download some data. Uh, 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 yeah, and uh, as I said, uh, initially in the canister, we saw two controllers. So the second controller was for the repository server. We can create the repository server using the CR. Uh, here you can see the structure, and uh, it contains a bunch of information required to configure this uh, uh, re uh, repository server. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are using the S3. For S3, we need to provide the credentials. And we need to provide some location where on S3 our repository will be located. And uh, of course, we need to <coughs> configure, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, we need to configure the repository itself because it also should be protected. So we need to pass some encryption key there. And uh, since we don't want to provide an ability to, uh, oh, okay, uh, since we have the repository server which works with the repository, we will have some clients, a copy of clients, which will be uh, con uh, communicating with it. And for this purpose, we don't want to use the admin uh, user account. So we can create the separate user account for this particular uh, copy of uh, clients. And then when they will communicate with the server, they will use this particular uh, account and of course there should be some TLS to ensure that uh, everything is encrypted and uh, uh, secure. So <clears throat> to start work with uh, the copy repository, we need to initialize it. So it's pretty big command, but uh, in s very soon future, I hope the canister will be able to create uh, a repository uh, itself. Uh, pretty uh, easy, uh, like it, uh, like it is doing right now with the different, more complicated things. And of course, we will need to have uh, some TLS certificate, uh, to, which will be used there uh, when uh, the clients will be communicating with uh, with the server. Uh, of course, we will need to prepare some secrets. It's just a standard Kubernetes secrets. Uh, we're providing the passwords for the user, for the repo and um, for S3, uh, so when we have everything done, uh, we can actually create and or start the repository server. So it's started, we see that it's running and ready to serve. And uh, right now we can see how the copier works with the file system. Uh, so let's create some dummy file, which will be our, let's say, uh, dump of our database, uh, for instance. and. Uh, we can create for our test application, we can create the blueprint. This blueprint will say what exactly of this application will be interesting for us and what exactly we would like to uh, upload to the repository. So you can see uh, uh, what exactly configured. There is the, uh, the path in, uh, in, in the artifact. Uh, you can see that uh, we should include the var log. And we are saying uh, which container should be uh, uh, backed up. Also, there are <coughs> uh, some uh, settings for the restoring and for the deleting. So you can uh, use all of them, of course. And uh, if we would like to perform the backup, we can uh, create the action set, which is action backup, almost the same which we does, uh, which we, which, what we did for the backup of the database. And uh, when the backup is done, we can remove the file, let's say, or in real scenario, probably something will, will happen with the database and we need to download the dump to machine quickly and then unpack and uh, return uh, the data back to the data database. So we are again creating the action set which will uh, restore the dump. And when the, we have the dump, we can uh, ask the canister again, having the dump to restore the data to the database as we saw uh, before. So that's all. Actually, pretty simple tools, but they are very powerful, and they can uh, you can use them for very complicated scenarios, and you will be happy, I, I believe. So that's all. If you have any questions, thank you very much. Uh, so far, we haven't got any questions. We have time, so feel free to ask.
Well, if there are no questions, thank you very much for your presentation. It was uh, interesting. I didn't know about this tool, so I will definitely check them out. Thank you. Thank you.